All right, good afternoon, Afrazi Warriors, and welcome to your Northwest Region 5-6 meeting for the month of May. I'm pumped up, guys, for today because I have the honor and privilege to introduce you guys to a uh, mentor of mine, a retired chief that I've known since I was a little A1C back at uh, Kirtland Air Force Base. Uh, I knew him when he was Senior Master Sergeant McFarland. I got to see him pin on chief. Uh, he's been a mentor to me for years, and he now works at the uh, Air Force Nuclear Weapons Center as an innovation consultant. And what, what's awesome about today is he's going to talk to us about how do we define team innovation. So I'm going to turn the floor over to Chief. I know we got a lot of folks that couldn't be here today that are at field training over at uh, Camp Shelby, Mississippi, good old Mississippi. But uh, we will make sure they watch. They can watch this video, the recording afterwards. So Chief, the floor is yours. Take it away. Well, and I cannot thank you guys enough uh, for having me come and speak today. Um, I'll tell you from personal experience, I worked for General Brown over in USAPE, the chief of staff when he was a two-star. He is scary smart. And I respect him. And like you said, uh, Mitch, I've, I've, I've known, you've known me for a decade plus. And, and me to say the R word, the respect word, that's a big deal. And he's earned it. Um, we have the right person in the, in the, in the seat right now. Um, and the very first document he put out was accelerate change or lose, right? The fo he followed that up with, you know, the A, Bs, and Cs. Why did he do this? Because, you know, I, I'll give you a real world example. I was in the PJ schoolhouse 20 minutes ago recognizing a PJ with the Kirtland Chiefs group. And the, the commandant, the chief, Chief Rubio in charge of it said, hey, the wars that you and I were used to coming up aren't gonna be the wars of the future. They're definitely not. But I wanna put, I wanna read something and you know, I'm getting old, so I'm gonna have to put on my glasses. And, uh, but I'm gonna read something real quick. Two things I wanna read to you guys. So on August, 2020, the chief of, chief of staff of the Air Forces accelerate change or lose document, he stated, only through collaboration within and throughout will we succeed. Most importantly, we must empower our incredible airmen to solve any problem. We must place value in multiple, multiple, multiple capable and adaptable team builders and courageous problem solvers that demonstrate value through integrity and initiative. Following that up, the Chief Master of the Air Force, Joanne Bass, same career field, known her for a few years, known her when she was an ops group chief out at Ramstein. On 25 March, on her uh, official Instagram and Facebook page, she stated the following, wars of the future will not look like wars of the past. She goes on further to state, we need to accelerate, we need to modernize, and we need to empower our airmen like never before. I said it before we started recording, I'm not your chief and I'm not trying to be your chief, but even in retirement, I'm a chief and I'm gonna here to help you. You have an innovation project you need help with? My boss has said, Mac, go out, help anybody who needs help. Which I, you know, I have to give him a hard time because he, is, he is a, was a Marine, you know? And then he went from Marine, he went to the Peace Corps. I know, I know you guys like say, what? He did. So, but I respect him, you know, he's doing great things. He's allowed me the opportunity to, to go forth and prosper and kick and butt and take and names. And what I mean by that is, Mac, you're gonna create the innovation fusion self from scratch. Guess what I got? Nothing, there was nothing built. Hit me up, I'm on the Air Force Global, or have C send you my email. Um, I'll send you our, our, and you may have issues logging into it if you're not logging into it without an Air Force computer. But on the Air Force computer, you can take a look at our SharePoint page. Um, anything I can do to help you guys with innovation, let me know. But let's talk about enhancing Timmy innovation, okay? You guys can see the slides, okay? Awesome. Perfect, Chief. We can see them. Okay. So I'm going to talk about background, the impact of team motivation, the components, the crucial collective. The principles of team innovation. We're going to wrap it up and we're going to have questions. Don't be surprised if I call on you. So, right, Sergeant Valentine? 
Yes, no, sir. It happens to me every Zoom. So yeah, I'm, I'm here. Well, and it's funny because I taught this class for my best friend's office. He works in the 99 FSS manpower office and none of them knew I was going to at least call on them. I call on folks. Why? Because I'll make sure you're paying attention. Also, if you can come up on camera, I would prefer you to come up on camera. If you can. If you can't, that's fine too. But I'll tell you, you'd be surprised. We had a, a our, our Air Force Nuke Weapons Center commander had a briefing and he asked all the senior leaders, we're talking colonels and GS-15s, to come up on camera. You, you see people running. They were running. Why? Because they had like a black, they had like some messed up shirt on and the hair was like this. And yeah, it was, it was quite interesting. So the bluff, bottom line up front, don't make things harder than they need to be. I will tell you this innovation journey, which I started about a year ago, I have not had a single person that has said, Patrick, I can't help you, which I think is phenomenal. Um, other folks are benchmark. I've got, I've got the guard unit out at uh, March and the 88th FSS at Wright Pat. They're, I'm helping them build their innovation program from scratch. Why? Because the AFI, sure, there's an AFI out there on it. There's also an Air Force AFI for CPI, and they're combining the two. So even as a MAGCOM, they're like, Patrick, we really don't know what you want, we want you to do right now. So my boss's boss is like, go forth, do your thing. And, and it's not, it, I have to say it, I know it's a little inappropriate, but I'm still going to say it. I'm like a fat kid eating cake. I love it, love it, love it. I do. I can't get enough. Because my passion, as he said, was is helping others. And I got that years ago from being a first sergeant out at Edwards. I got much, you know, I had ops group and I had med group. I got much love for the medics, but y'all made me gray. And people go, well, chief, it's because of the females. And I go, no, the drama. And I said it that way on purpose. In the med group are the dudes. That was like Cicerelli when he was A1C. A little cray cray. Not crazy, but a little cray cray. I think you guys understand what I'm saying. So next up, background. So innovation is central to the Air Force identity and purpose. Historically, the force has relied on innovation for force pre presentation. I can remember A1C McFarland walking to the Wing Operations Center on 17 January 1991, watching hundreds of aircraft go north into Iraq when I was at King Fodder National Airport. That's innovation right there. So examples, they include the space elements, safety technology, and fifth generation aircraft, F-35s, F-22s. I can remember when the F-22 and the F-23 were competing out at Edwards, flying against each other. Personally, I like the, the 23 better, but the Air Force selected the 22. But, and no, I haven't been around since, you know, because years ago I attended a first sergeant meeting at headquarters USAFE and they hit me up with, they said, hey chief, you know, you were in, in Vietnam. I was like, wow, that's messed up. It's not true, but the one constant in the Air Force has been changed. Think about it. A year, a year and a half ago, would anybody have known what COVID is? I'm sitting here today in my office in Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico, Albuquerque, keep briefing you guys on teams. But you'd think after all this time, you know, today there was a meeting on CBR teams. Well, some of the Air Force is still scratching their head going, wait, there's a difference between DOD teams and there's another teams? Yes, there is. It, 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 you know, you'd think at the multi-high levels of the Air Force, people would think that out, but you still got colonels and GS-15s, which are colonel equivalents, going to uh, the wrong teams. So the Air Force and Air Force Material Command, this center, the Air Force Nuke Weapons Center, falls underneath the AFMC. And what they've done is they've linked CPI innovation to form CPI squared. I'm the squared portion. So it's continuous process improvement and innovation. They did that in January. They're both intertwined, but they're not the same. The Air Force has every year that, you know, you saw, you see it on ABC, they got, they got Shark Tank. Well, the Air Force does a Spark Tank competition. And I'll tell you 99.9% .9 of the, the ideas that get put into idea scale, which is the current system they use to put in ideas, which can, is going to go away in a few weeks, 99.9% .9 of them don't get, don't get go to Spark Tank, but it's really cool. You know, a few years ago, the, you know, like the Chief Master of the Air Force, the Chief of Staff of the Air Force, 
when they were doing it in person and they were doing it in Orlando, you know, they actually had Mark Cuban there too, to decide on these ideas. But that's what I love about my leadership is they've empowered me, you know, to, to basically go to and help others enhance their own programs. The Air Force Nuclear Weapons Center, like I said, it's the first of the kind, first of its kind. When I inherited, and I'll say it, the ugly baby, because uh, nobody had done nothing in nine, nine months. So, you know, I was living in a world that, well, I'm not going to say it, but you understand what I'm saying. So I got it, but that's what's been great is I've got phenomenal leadership, phenomenal teammates. If you don't think these slides have been vetted through other folks, but also on the innovation side, C said, I'm a retired chief. I'm not used to making slides. The first time I put in my slides, my boss was like this. Say what? He's like, really? He's like, this is what you're giving me? Well, because I'm not used to making slides. I'm used to, you know, the way I describe slides or the stew. I get the stew as a chief. I don't make the stew. I don't cut up the carrots and the tomato, you know, the, the, you know, the, 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 the carrots and the potatoes and cook up the beef. I get the stew when it's done. So what, what did I do? What was recommended? Hey, Mac, make your weakness a strength. That's how you got the slides you're looking at today. Do I have the slide deck that has all these really cool images and stuff? I do. Cease, remind me to, you know, email me and I'll send it to you. It's quite big, though. It's like, it's like 18, 19 meg. It's big. But is it worth, is the juice worth the squeeze? Oh, yeah, definitely. So everything is about our potential you know for i've been retired for four years and even in those four years or, or even in the years prior to that how do you make chief i was innovative um you know throughout my career i was always trying to make something better you know my mentor c master I'm retired lorenzo wine said mac i've been cleaning up the and i'll use it well i won't use the bad german word but i've been cleaning up the crap my whole career uh, sometimes inher inheriting the ugly baby isn't a bad thing because you can, you know, the cream always rises to the top. Sustain superior performance. People go, how do I make senior? How do I make chief? Sustain superior performance. That's the bottom line. It, it truly is. So the impact of team innovation. What do I want to see? I want to see creativity. I want to see innovation. And I want to see performance. Everybody here is at least a staff sergeant. I know everybody here knows what the acronym ROAD is, right? Sergeant Rodriguez, what does ROD stand for? Do you remember? I got the, you need to phone um, a friend? Yes, I do. <laughs> Jeez, what's road? You know, Chief, this is embarrassing. I think you stumped me too. <laughs> Can we have the first word? <laughs> Tired? Do you hear my coworker in the background? No. He said retired on active duty. Ah, okay. Oh, I've never uh, heard that acronym before. <laughs> you've never heard that acronym. I'm glad no. you could, if you listen to nothing else I day, you're going to be like, hey, I know what road is. There we go. <laughs> but you guys understand what I'm saying. You've got that NCO that you're like scratching your head going, what did he do all day? What did she do all day? And I'm going to use a line from NFL Sunday morning. Come on, man. Really? The Air Force does not have the time to, to deal with that. You Handle your business. Get stuff done. Take care of your airmen. Take care of your cadets. Because those cadets someday may be the next chief of staff of the Air Force. You know, when I was coming up, it was only pilots that were in leadership positions. My boss at Ellsworth, when I won the Air Force in 2001, Gentry Boswell is now a one-star, as a, and he's a wizzo. He's a back ender on a B-1 bomber. But when I was coming up, you only were pilots were in these, these upper level positions. So the Air Force is innovating. We're getting, we're, you know, getting the right people in the seats. So innovation and creativity, it's a process. It's not going to happen overnight. But don't get me wrong, you can be sitting in a, in a room and you could be inspired. You know, I could show you my SharePoint page and, and you'll go in there and click it and go, wait, if you've got an idea, all I have to do is click a button. That happened today. Why? Because I got a guy. I got a SharePoint guy. And when it comes to SharePoint, I'm like, Carlos Muncie, I'm DDD. Nope, not, not the guy, but I got a guy. 
having that guy is is been huge. You look at the SharePoint site, you see innovation is nothing new to, to, to Team Kirtland. And you've got a video from a few years ago from Airmen Powered by Innovation, where they did this small sheet metal fix on this on the CV-22s and it's saving them, you know, I don't know, $150,000. You know, where does the creativity in the innovation begin? We talk about creativity. Creativity is the practice of problem solving and coming up with new ideas. Benchmarking, go for it, make it your own. You know, I jokingly tell people plagiarism is the bad thing in the Air Force. Don't get me wrong, don't take credit for somebody else's stuff. And I'll give you an example. As a MAGCOM functional, I used to have 1206s, winning 1206s on my SharePoint page. Well, then what somebody did, and it got back to me from a, from a, a chief, is somebody took that 1206, copied and pasted it, and put on her EPR. And he wouldn't tell me who it was because he knows me. I'm a prior first sergeant. I would have ended that person's career. Well, they would have ended it themselves, but I think you guys understand what I'm saying. Whoever did that had no integrity. Have the creativity. You know what? If you need help, reach out. I told you guys I was in the PJ unit a little bit ago. I introduced myself to this young staff sergeant, and she goes, she goes, I know who you are. And I'm like, because I showed her my name, my, my name tag, and she goes, you're Chief McFarlane. You used to put stuff on Facebook for the career field all the time. And I'm like, yep. I said, I've been retired three, about you know four years. She goes, oh, I know who you are, though. She goes, you know, and I asked people, I, asked, I, I said, I use Mitch as an example. Mitch, here's the baton. Run with it. Start providing inf information out there. Knowledge is power. You know, professional development stuff to folks. Nobody took that mantle. Is it sad? Very much so. You know, I talked about innovation, putting your creative ideas into practice. So creating innovative teams. Like I said before, there's no I in team. Um, these slides, this is not the first version of these slides, trust me on that. But I want you to focus your team innovation. Innovation requires action. You gotta get it done, get after it. Um, refine it slash change your thing. Um, one of the first ideas when I was, at, I was talking about putting a SharePoint together was, was that video. Well, I totally forgot about it and the SharePoint had been up online for probably two months. And I'm like, oh, I remember that video. Let's get that video on there. I put that idea into, into action. Generating ideas. Like I said, I mentioned I was in an innovation class last week and this, this uh, scientist from Arnold, is, I think it's Air Reserve Base or whatever base it is in Tennessee. She's like, she mentioned something. I'm like, I've got to do that. So now you click a button, it'll email me in our workflow that you've got an innovation idea. Design a new process. Is there something, some way to do it better? You know, continuous process improvement. Um, you know, say in a, eventually you guys want to do a continuous process improvement class. I got a guy. He sits two cubicles away from me. You know, the whole days of I'm going to sit in a class for 40 hours for a week. Because when I got my green belt, it was a 40-hour class. Then I did it here at Kirtland. Observe an event. Co-facilitate an event facilitate an event and then turn in an A3. Well, now it's, you go to the, you have to do 40 hours online, do a, a, an event and turn in the A3. So they innovated it. You know, they continuously process improved it. They're talking about it going back to the unit, but I mentioned this because Brian will basically come in and teach an hour class versus that 40 hour class. Don't get me wrong. He's got the PPSM um, class. Um, that's eight hours. And he breaks it up into two, four hours. Um, but that's something he did. Is, and here it says, create a new service, question mark. He created a new service. Instead of doing it eight hours one day, he's cracked, or he's divided it into two. Improving your products. Is there something you can do with something better? So, on Valentine, I think when this first started, you mentioned, and I'm not going to make you speak, <laughs> but you mentioned about, you know, having some people fly in, in and out of a, uh, uh, New Orleans, NOLA. Well, is that an innovative idea? Is it a new service? Is it a new process? You know, and the what if thinkings, hey, well, what if I do this? What if I do that? I want you to, to generate ideas. So the team, 
there's it's a sum of all parts. You got everybody here, everybody in the room right now has different skills, strengths, and styles that complement innovation process. You know, develop your individual creativity. The first step is idea generation phase. Some of them ideas, they're gonna fail. In the innovation improvement consultant workshop, the I2CW course, and I was the beta class. I'm bummed out because it's it's NC, it's UNC Chapel Hill. So you know I want to go to UNC to go to this class. COVID. Darn you, COVID. But and keeping it real, everybody here has been to ALS. You get more from your classmates and the discussions you guys have around the tables and at the at the club or the bar or wherever um, than you do in the class itself. And I think that's one of the things we missed out. Developing team energy and creativity, it breeds team, team innovation. Also individual creativity encourages a culture of innovation. So in the new age of work and team innovation, Innovation is the lifeblood of many organizations. It truly is. You know, um, I put earlier this month, my champion signed the call to innovation, which is for the Air Force Nuke Weapons Center. Um, earlier this week, we finally got that letter out. But in, the, the, in addition to the letter, we put up an email. I drafted up an email for him that went through my boss, the boss's boss, and then upstairs. But it, said, it says, remember Blockbuster? They were set in their ways. We're not going to change. What does Netflix do? Oh, they're worth, what, $22, $23 billion? And Mitch, your gee whiz for you. Oh, by the way, what used to be Albuquerque Studios south of the base here is now Netflix. And they're putting billions and billions of dollars here. I don't know if you guys, uh, not a very good movie, but Netflix just put out the, uh, the, the zombie movie. Um, if you watch it, you're going to go, oh, hey, you could... Mitch, you're going to go, I know where that is. I know where that is because they film it here. You'd be shocked on some of the uh, things that they film out here. Uh, I was going to say, which one, sir? There's like 30 zombie movies on Netflix right now. Um, it's the one that just came out. It's brand new. Uh, Army, no. And I went and saw it in the theaters because the theaters moved up, opened up. Was it Army of the Dead? No. No. Oh, does it have like uh, actually Dave, some like well-known actors? Yeah, Dave, Dave Batista. Oh, okay. Yeah, it just came out on Netflix. It's brand new. Army of the Dead? No, not Army. I don't remember. Something like um, that. It's not a very good movie, but the fact yeah. that I could actually go to a movie theater with my son and eat popcorn. What? What? It was great. Not a good movie, but it was great to get back into the theaters. But people want to work. I lost my pen, but it's all good. Develop, you know, I'm sorry. People want to work that has meaning, creativity, and flexibility. Do any of you want to, you know, be in a job where you're like, I don't want to do this anymore? Because it will start, and that was me a little bit over a year ago. But it started showing physically as far as, you know, I always look like I'm mad anyways, but it got worse. Plus I, the mentality, I was starting to get better. No one wants to have an, work in an organization where, you know, there's, you, you're not making it, you know, you, there's no meaning, you can't create, you can't be flexible. You should nurture creativity and innovation and develop a culture of team innovation. But a big part of that is your champion. You have to have a champion. Real world story, Staff Sergeant McFarland was a flight attendant in the Air Force. I got, yes, and I get a lot of crap for being a former flight attendant, but I tell people I've been married 30 plus years. Trust me, I'm secure. Um, but when I got to being a flight attendant, I put in a, a suggestion and the suggestion got approved. Well, about six months ago, I had somebody pull the database. Guess what hasn't changed in 20 years? The suggestion the staff sergeant McFarland put in in 2001. The aviation resource management system, the ARMS database, looks exactly the way it does 20 years ago on the passport screen. Why? Because I didn't have the right champion pushing it. It was approved by the Air Force, but I didn't have the right champion pushing it, and I didn't have the right money or somebody with money or somebody who can make a difference. So 
you know, in the new age and, and of work and team and innovation, take time to think about creative abilities. How creative do you think you are? Do you feel that you're creative? And is this a skill you could work on? You know, focus your creativity. Generate your ideas. Connect concept. Phone a friend. You know, I had somebody hit me up two days ago. Hey, I've got a question on AFWorks. I know the guy. Or gal, it could be guy or gal. In this case, it was guy. You know, um, enhance creativity. Individual creativity. Challenge the status quo. Well, that's the always, that's a, that's, we've always done it that way here at the University of Kansas. Does it make it right? Maybe, maybe not. Generate, you know, and generate outputs. Get some stuff done. Because collaboration leads to action. So when we talk about the psychology of innovation. You have to be open to change. You know, psychological flexibility. Son Rodriguez, what does psychological flexibility mean to you? Um, I guess just in general being flexible, but um, I guess psychologically, like mentally being able to, I guess, understand other people's perspectives and, you know, just being, being open to the change of different ideas and different opinions. Oh, yeah. Well, and sometimes people will shock you. See, you've known me for 10 years, right? So that, and I'm going to give you guys a real world story, okay? This young lady got in trouble. She went to the squadron commander, said, CMSR McFarland's a racist. The, ir the irony is my commander, you know, I'd written a, the, well, there could be nothing farther from the truth. And I felt bad for the captain because the investigation was done. She spent a week of her time. I'm not going to say wasting her time, but there were no findings because it wasn't true. She was just mad in trouble. And she, and, and, uh, she made this, this, uh, she was not psychological. She, there was no flexibility there. It was just, he's this. No, it wasn't the case, but here's the irony. I come back, you know, I make chief pin on, you know, was here for six months, left for three years, came back. And that same airman was a senior airman when I came back. Well, she was a senior airman when I was here. And I'm like, hmm, I, I don't have to wonder why, karma. But she's been doing the same thing she did with me, but in other organizations. And if you haven't figured it out, like I said, I teach with stories. I, I teach with comedies most of the time, but sometimes there's, there's not good stories out there. You know, I can tell you as a first sergeant, I've seen some stuff. I foot, I've seen the A1, the five foot two A1C beat up her six foot three husband, who's a senior airman, because he was spending too much time at ALS. And oh, by the way, the guy who got beat up was my dude. And the popo took him away, the guy who got beat up. So I want you to, you know, generate many ideas. Some are going to be good, some are going to be bad. You know, switch between perspectives. Sometimes you got to be devil's advocate and ask why. Problem solvers. Be that person. You know, I've said it before, I'll say it again. What's the one constant in the Air Force is change. I saw an email yesterday or the day before, now they're breaking out. They're changing how they're doing, drastically how they're doing the Air Force PT test. The thing that used to get me is, see, knows this, I'm five foot eight. I got these little T-Rex arms. And yeah, I said T-Rex arms. But I was done at 30 seconds doing push-ups during the PT test. Well, Chief, well, you can do more. Why? Are you going to give me any more points? That used to kill me. And I had to do the walk test for eight years because I got these bad, nasty old knees. But if I got a 90, I had still had to do it every six months. Is that pro solving a problem? No. But do I think the Air Force is getting smarter and changing it up? Yes. Playful and disciplined. I mentioned that. You can't, nobody wants to not come to, work every, or come to work every day and just not be happy. And if you are, make a change. I did it. Folks, I, I had a, a job, you know, making 77 grand a year and I resigned. Why? Because I wasn't happy. I'm literally making $240 or more a year as a GS. But my happiness is priceless. Use the what if statements. 
Also, folks, you, you know, the people possess introvert and extrovert traits. Just because somebody's an introvert doesn't mean their 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 ideas and their you know should not be heard. They definitely should be. So we got challengers, executors, and enablers. These are key behavioral types. We got challengers, think of new ideas, push the boundaries. Mitch, as long as I've known you, you've pushed the boundaries. Just saying. Not a bad thing, but you've pushed the boundaries. But there's a reason when I knew you was an A1C and now you've got a line number for master. You got executors. They put ideas into action. They create innovative strategies and plans. And the enablers, they use influence to get things done and they build relationships. You need to involve these different types of people on your team. So I'm forward. What are you? Are you a challenger, executor, or an enabler? I'm probably more of an enabler just because I'm all about building relationships. And um, I just enjoy like being with people and being able to build upon each other ideas. <clears throat> oh, yeah. And, and I'm right there with you. I'm an enabler. Um, the LRS commander here for assigned to the air base wing. He, we were at this class and he's like, Mac, he goes, uh, he, or he calls me chief, but different, different time in my career. But he goes, chief, you're a master enabler. You help get stuff done. The scenario was 377th was in the middle of a UEI, 58 special operations wing where C's used to be assigned, I used to be assigned, is gonna have their UEI next week. But last week, you know, when folks are in the UEI or prepping for the UEI, because of connections to the chiefs group, to the first sergeant council and to people I know, I was able to get 20 people with the help of others to attend this innovation class, which is a beta test that, the, that SpaceWorks is put, working, working on and putting together. You know, you gotta have those different types. You gotta have those challengers that are thinking of new ideas. I had a guest speaker, because we have a thing here at Kirtland called the Team Kirtland Innovators, where we get folks from all over we get a guest speaker one of my first guest speakers and i heard about him i heard about him in a conference we were, i was attending this dude had 22 patents in a year here at kirtland all concerning space you know i'm i'm decently smart but this guy is scary scary he's like scarier than general brown smart 22 patents in one year all concerning space wow I do it's phenomenal. So innovation Eric, flexibility. Go ahead. I have a question about that one. Um, you say that you know there are different types of people, but what if um, is it possible? Do you feel it's possible to be to have all of those um, capabilities? Yes, very much so. Great question. What's your take, though? Well, I actually feel I have all of these capabilities because I often do think of a lot of new ideas. Uh, pushing the boundaries, I always kind of have to ask the questions to be sure. Um, but I definitely like to put my, my new ideas into action. And then as an enabler, I love to build relationships and get other people involved in like my ideas because I'm just like so passionate about them. So I was curious to see if you thought that could be someone like all these, um, these types into one person. Yep. I, yes, I agree wholeheartedly. But I will also recommend if you know you have a weakness out of those three, figure out what your weakness is and make it your strength. Um, yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, and speaking of strength, when I met, when I met Mitch, he was like this big. And I don't know if you guys are on fa Facebook friends with him, but you see, wait, this. And this. Wait, I can't do the neck pose. Okay. Did I just bust him out? I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud, Steve? That's not no, that was fine, sir. That was <laughs> that was perfect. Okay, he's, he's turning purple. He's laughing so hard. But what I'm saying is, he's like, you know what? I'm, I'm a bit small. I need to put on some size. Well, he's put on some size. But there's a difference between size and size. You know, I, you know I, I'm a, he knows it's the same thing, you know. I'm the most boringest dude on Facebook. I post about books, mentoring others, because trust me, you guys will be out on Facebook later because I love doing what I'm doing here today. Um, but it's 
go to the gym, reading, mentoring. Why? Because if one person picks up a book, picks up a book, goes to the gym or mentors somebody, I've done what I want to do. Like I said, I'm very, very boring on Facebook. But it's like I said, you great question. Yeah, you can be all three, but make a strength a weakness. Psychological flexibility and failing. It's okay to fail. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, my biggest lessons learned are from, from, from failure. Has anybody here ever been the number one non-select for a promotion? I'm only one raising my hand. Number one, and Cease was there, number one non-select from the Air Force for Chief. I was the, the squadron senior NCO of the year, wing one Charlie of the year, MATCHCOM level award, had my master's degree that year, planning and zoning commissioner for the city of Rio Rancho, volunteered 75 hours, put, you know, supporting 80 or 95,000 people and didn't get promoted with that EPR. Why? I scored a 60, a 60, 62. Well, I'll tell you straight out back in the day, the hard, you know, you know, everybody here's taking Air Force tests. I'm not telling you what's on the test, but you know, you normally throw out the two, you have one that's, that's not really close and then you have the right answer. That's, that's a typical Air Force test, right? Well, the chief test, they have two that are really, really, really close. Hardest test I've ever taken in my life, honestly. Um, but the next year, I busted that up, up by about 12 more points. But like I said, that's kind of rough. Primary tools. How well you face failure can predict innovation. I failed that year. That sucked. It is what it is. Psychological flexibility, you know, adapt, overcome. Um, some You're going to sometimes get told no. A lot of times you'll get told no. You know, success is built on the experience of many failures. I need you to have psychological resilience and building resilience. Psychological resilience. My coworkers know it. A lot of people know it. I talk about it. At, uh, at Sergeant Valentine's rank, I was at Cobar Towers in 1996. Does anybody know what happened at Cobar Towers in 1996? Is it on the PDG, sir? It is. It should be. Cobar Towers. It was bombed by terrorists. They took a truck about 110 feet away from a dormitory. 19 Air Force members were killed. 400 in, were injured. I talk about it because I got help as a senior and made chief. I even got help in retirement. Why? Because not all scars are visible. But I will tell you, as a staff sergeant, I put in a suggestion and it went nowhere. A few years later, I put in the suggestion again, but the first sergeant been around a while, put it together in ESS. This is before the days of electronic ESSs, ESSs, but worked with now my best friend. And we put in a suggestion to change our, our career fields team or our career fields annual award you know, like they have the Red Irwin Award, or they have the, the you know, there's so many different awards out there, you know, the Pittsburgh Award for like AL, Emma Leadership School, the John Lovato, there's, there's a, a lot of awards. Well, that year, they created a team award. So the team award at the Match Common Air Force level is named after Sergeant Millard D, goes by D, Campbell, taking a negative into a positive, psychological resilience. So innovation, innovation strengths, you got to promote that team strength. There is no I in team. And how do you know, you need, how well do you know your unique strengths? Do you know your weaknesses? And if so, what are you doing to improve your weaknesses? Diversity in, can increase team performance and innovation. Looking at the group here, it's a diverse group, but when, when I tell you diversity, I'm not just talking, I'm talking experience, um, background, education. Um, you know, I've th heard the term thrown around before education snob. Um, I worked with somebody that when I got the customer service manager job for the base maintenance contract here, she was salty and mad at the world. Why? Well, because I got the job. Well, I have a master's degree. She doesn't even have an associate's degree. So, it, you know, you got to have some diversity. Can you guys hold on one sec?
No problem, Chief. <laughs> Sorry about that. Just no didn't problem. want him yelling. <laughs> and I got my pen. So diverse teams are innovative teams. Diversity is the key to innovative teams. Mentioned that already. Diverse teams, they challenge and push and support to develop good ideas. You need to create that diverse team. You need to have different thinking styles, experience, abilities, perspectives, and networks. One of the cool things that I talked about that innovation class that we, that we all attended last week is me as a retired chief contractor now GS, it was a lot different than the staff sergeants and the A1Cs in the room. We all had very, very different perspectives. You know, like in my office, I'm not allowed to have phones because of where I work. I work in plans and programs, but back in the day, I'll use this. This is my iPod. Don't really have an iPod, it's sticky, but you guys understand, you know, this was my iPod back in the day. It was a sticky. And now people got all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, my dad lives in Nebraska and I'm talking to him on the iPad, actually physically getting to see him. You know, technology is phenomenal. Use it to your advantage. Okay, what I want you to do is accept the bias. There's bias out there. You know, you gotta, you gotta seek its feedback. Sometimes you gotta challenge aggressively. You gotta challenge assumptions. Certain ideas you're gonna dismiss. And sometimes you're only gonna listen to specific people. You know, I know the saying great minds think alike, but if you only get the facts that support your idea or your thesis, you know, crap in, crap out. Um, and you're like, hey, why is this messed up? Well, did you get others' opinion? Um, Cease, as long as you've known me, have I always called the baby ugly if it's ugly? Pretty much all the time, Chief. <laughs> I do, but do I also say, hey, but here's how we fix the ugly baby, and here's how we go there? All, all the time, and that's the thing. You know, you're, you're not just uh, – you'll, you'll, you'll give that honest truth, but you'll, you'll also give that, that feedback, that, that you know – it's up to it's up to the individual to take that feedback always, but you you always oh, yeah. give it you always give that helping hand. Oh yeah, yeah. And there's 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 a world of folks out there that don't. And I'll just leave that at that. Uh, we all have inherent biases. Like I mentioned, education snobs as an example. Uh, developing new ideas. Uh, we also need you enhancing your team innovation. Sarah, I have a quick question on that slide. Which one? This one? Yes, except the bias. Um, yep. Whenever you say we all have inherent bias, can you elaborate just a little bit on that? So what I mentioned is, is like education stops. You don't know what you're talking about. Or wait, you're just an A1C. You wouldn't know. Um, wait, well, you've, you've only been an ROTC for a year. You don't know what you're talking about. Yes, sir. I uh, mentioned that because like um, the innovation strengths that you mentioned, how well do you know your, your unique strengths? Uh, we did a, our recent resiliency tactical pause actually was about biases. And um, I think one of the big things here is also knowing your strengths, but also knowing your biases. We had a, it was a really great video that asked a simple question. Um, and that really taught, you know, it, it, it kind of shows you like, oh, I do have bias. I didn't know I did. So that was really cool. So I think accepting the bias and knowing your biases definitely helps with that um but i just wanted you to elaborate what you what you thought was inherent biases um opposed to like your unknown biases oh yeah well but you it's, as an example well everybody from the south is racist really you know and that's resiliency training that was part of that course um because i facilitated for xp and some of the scenarios i was like wow big blue the air force went there and I thought it was a good thing. Um, are they out there? Sure. Um, I mentioned earlier, only pilots back in the day. You know, General Brown has, has put out stories where he was the only person that looked like him in the room on many meetings. You know, or, you know, look at the four stars. They all kind of look like me. You know, um, very few females, you know, um, um, amongst our amongst our higher ranks you know first ever chief master in the air force like i said i worked with for joe with joanne bass over in over in usapi 
uh, first ever female. Should she have been the first ever female? Were there people qualified for that position or just as qualified for before? Sure. Um, could that have been an inherent bias? If you go back and look at history, look at the chief master, or sorry, look at the chief of staff of the Air Force. And most of them are fighter pilots. You know, how many of them were special ops? One. How many of them were heavy airlift folks? One, maybe two. Um, good examples, hopefully. Hope it helped. Yes, sir. And also, I believe there there was some information recently. Um, so that would be a new change. Uh, was the evaluation system for uh, meeting boards and having male and female listed on there, um, or if it's there's ranks, but of course, just the gender in general is kind of accepting the bias and understanding how that's going to change. Um, just being more innovative with the evaluation or uh, board. Well, and. and Years ago, I was a senior at Spangala. Oh, I'm sorry. I'd just taken off a diamond, hadn't made senior yet, and then I made senior. But I'm sitting in the operational sports squadron. And one thing that base didn't have on the 1206s, which I think the all bases should, is I think at the top, it should have education level. You know, like if you have your degree, if you have your PME done, so there isn't any questions. Because if you don't have all your blocks filled, you know, but his point was, I'm not getting a second master's or a PhD just to win a quarterly award. And I'm right there with you, brother. I agree wholeheartedly. No, no, you don't, you shouldn't have to. But if you don't want to get your education, there's Air Force cool. There's so many certifications out there that you can do it. Yesterday, and I'm not kidding, I finished ACQ 1010. I finished my first ever acquisitions course because because I and I don't have an acquisitions ba background. Um, why? Because I'm trying to, you know, put more tools in my tool shed and make me a better, better analyst. So the di diversity is the key to team innovation. Oh, I'm sorry. We already talked about this one. My bad. Here we go. So let's call collaboration and team innovation. Element one, explore connections between different types of ideas. Two is plan and coordinate team efforts. Like I said, there's no I in team and you guys need to work together on it. Um, if, if University of Kansas is doing one thing, you know, something they taught us at the Innovation Consultant Workshop is do tests, test it at your campus, then test it at another campus. And then if it's working on two campuses, try three or four more campuses and then try to implement it Air Force wide. That's, you know, plan and coordinate a team efforts. Provide constructive, honest and open feedback. If you ask me, I will tell you. The blue pen will tell you. And you and the element four, which is utilize collective energy to drive ideas and implementation. So experimentation and team innovation. You know, decide what action to take. Get seed feedback from several sources. These slides, I had two or three people take a look at them before I sent them to the boss. And continuous development is critical to achieve results and thrive. Sergeant Dixon, out of those four or three, which one do you think is most important? Um, I'm sorry, sir. Experimenting, exper experimentation and team innovation. I got three bullet holes that have ideas next to them. Um, Deciding where to take action, get feedback from several sources, or continuous development is critical to achieve results and thrive. Which one of the three do you think most is most important? Uh, getting feedback, because without feedback, you don't know if what you're doing is um, on the right track, if it's going to work. Uh, and when you do implement it, you still need that feedback to make sure that it is working the way it's supposed to work or if changes need to be, to be made. Great answer. So... Uh, Mitch, how many EPR bullets are there on a Chief's EPR? Ooh, way less than uh, on 911 and 910. I know that. You phone a friend, yeah. Cease. Five. There we go. There we go. But, and, and, and you know, the fired up Chief, I, I posted something about helping a Chief with their EPR, and he's like, well, back in my day, you know, they, it didn't really matter what, what, you know. And I'm like, well, EPRs for Chiefs are being used to, to, you know, if they want to go command chief, if they want to go group chief, stuff like that. But the fact there's only five bullets, my first chief EPR 
it was a full up. And I'm like, like 16 bullets. What do I, I have a master's degree. I'm not going to get any, what do I need to put on there for education? I ain't going to be P, Dr. McFarland. Mm -mm, nope, 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 nope. I'm good there. But the Air Force innovative. They said, hey, let's change this up. We don't need all these bullets for chiefs. We don't. So reflection and team innovation. You need a diverse team with collaborated ideas. You need to test whatever you're working on, get it reviewed, revise it, put some critical reflection into it, ask critical, critical questions, and then examine the results objectively. Sergeant Dixon, you mentioned it earlier, and I'm sorry, I can't see the, the hyphen on your last part of your name, I apologize, but you mentioned it earlier. Um, you know, you got to make sure that what if, you, if you've implemented it, is it working? Because sometimes stuff doesn't work. Innovative, failing, and thriving. Items to be aware of. You need to build psychological safety to reduce the stigma of failing. It's okay to fail, depending on the failure. You drinking and driving, that's a failure. You know, um, should you do it? No. Does Big Blue tell you that you shouldn't do it? Big Blue does tell you need to, you shouldn't do it. Uh, psychological safety. Um, fight of flight response. Mitchell, what does that mean to you, to you fight of flight response? I think it's that, in, that inherent uh, instinct that people have to whether they're going to take on an issue head on or they're going to kind of, you know, uh, evade it, either run away from it or, or you know, not, not face it directly. So that, it's yeah. kind of like that, um, your instincts, you know, the human yeah. instinct that everybody has. Exactly. Or being on the defense. Right. We all have our baggage. My favorite class for my master's degree was uh, family system and reconstruction. And the premise is we all have baggage. And mom and, and most of us and younger adults get their baggage from our mom and our dad. Well, in my case, you don't see Danford and Jean as Danford and Jean. You see them as mom and dad. And mom and dad don't make mistakes. Well, yeah, they're human. Everybody makes mistakes. Um, but sometimes people have that baggage where they're always on the defense and they don't need to be. Focus on the process of trying. You know, hey, you tried this, it worked out, it failed, but you tried. You know, I've heard of lots of leaders that they love coining people for folks that have tried something and it failed because they gave it the effort. They thought outside the box and enhancing psychological safety. Creating a white space to, to thrive. I mentioned earlier this week, I taught this class to the manpower folks at Nellis. And they actually were going to have this class on a whiteboard. And what's the ir irony? Is it wouldn't work. So everybody was running back to their office to get on their computer because they couldn't do it on the whiteboard. So I want you to create a place where people want to work. You know, say, create a safe space. Or you know what somebody else said is create a, an innovation time. Put an hour of on your schedule a week to think about innovation or to work on innovation on how you can make things better. You know, you have the physical comforts and basic needs. Well, in my office here, I've got my coat. Why do I have my coat? Because this office gets really, really, really cold. But other places in the building gets like 90 degrees. Um, but you need to have that, you know, that safe, you know, that physical comforts. Or basic needs, you know, like the popcorn machine when we have in the office. And I'm not kidding, we have a popcorn machine. It's like one of the movie ones. It's you know, big. And is that a is that a basic need? No. But do we really like having it? Yes. Once a week. Develop create curiosity. And create a culture of innovation. I'll also tell you, some people are more creative in the mornings or in the evenings. My first ever EPR, I put A1C Kelly remain behind while unit deployed. Mass Sergeant Ron Schaefer still laughs at me to this day. He's like, dude, she was so good at you left her home. But the thing that I praise Sergeant Schaefer to this day, and he was one of my bosses, one of my mentors, is if I wanted him to do an EPR or 1206, I let him sit in his office with the door shut early in the morning because that's when he got his best, his best work out there. And then all this should lead to you to success. So creating your innovation chart team, your charter. 
you know, we benchmarked somebody else's charter for here. And after the fifth attempt getting it through the boss's boss, we're like, we're done. We're not gonna, we're not gonna try to do a charter here. We failed and it's okay to fail. But these are guiding principles that, that, that details teammates working together. Create a new strategy, which is problem to solve and the guiding principles. Define the problem to solve. Agree on the guiding principles. Craft a statement of consideration and state specific roles and responsibilities. There's actions, ideate, act, influence, feedback, test, measure, launch, and iterate. I can't even say that word. Help me out. Somebody help me out. What's that last word? Iterate. Say again. Iterate. Thank you. Boom. There you go. Need more caffeine. You and me. Know it's the middle of the day. <laughs> I sent an email. I sent a, a meme to my co my my coworkers last night, and it's like, breakfast is not your bang <laughs> drink. That's a lie. That's by breakfast every morning. <laughs> if you you all know Mitchell, does he need it? <laughs> oh. So I want you to have creative building blocks, team innovation, encourage novel ideas. Except there's going to be obstacles. Trust me, there will be obstacles along the way. Um, focus on challenging ideas and find a team flow. You got to find your flow. Seek others' perspectives. You know, seek diverse perspectives. Um, you're you're a one Charlie Oscar. You're a three, you know, three alpha. You're a three delta. Never hurts to have somebody else take a look at your EPR, your SIR, your your you know your your twelve oh six, your idea. Develop develop collective market knowledge. So on Valentine, what's that mean? Develop collective market knowledge. Um, it sounds like, you know, making sure that, you know, you're not only hitting those in front of you, like that knowledge in front of you, but a collective of other perspectives, um, other people that you might not interact with daily all the time, but are kind of within your vicinity, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to be in your vicinity. They could be, they could be, uh, you know, another base, another command. Um, here recently, PACAF had me take a look at their itinerary for an upcoming innovation summit they have. And the boss's boss won't let me go. I asked, I said, Ms. Santos is her name. I said, Ms. Santos, can I go to Hickam? No. She didn't even think about it. Just no. I, she, well, she goes, and if you can go, I'm going with you. <laughs> so, yeah, that, you know, but they're, de they're developing the collective market knowledge. They're hitting me up going, hey, what do you think about this? You know, one of the classes that they have, trust me, I'm going to benchmark that and then give them credit that I'm benchmarking. Enhanced lifelong learning. I mentioned it a few minutes ago, me finishing my first defense acquisitions university or DAU course on acquisitions 1010. I learned from my coworker that class is about half the size it used to be. Right, Bruce? Uh, yes, sir. You hear Bruce in the background go, yes, sir. It was twice as long. And be curious. There's, you know, why are we doing it this way? What can we do to make it better? What can we do to innovate it? Sir, I ask that all the time in AFRODC. I understand. Well, in, in, in 2007, years ago, I had the opportunity to um, be a first sergeant at Fort Riley, Kansas. And I get, that ain't a deployment. And I'm like, shut your mouth. I had 335 people. 335 people to a bunch of crazy A1Cs that know they're going to Afghanistan or or, or, or uh, Iraq for a year. So, you know, they're a little cray cray. But, and they're allowed to go off base. So, yeah, they did what young airmen do um, to a bunch of colonels to include my med group commander who just finished writing my EPR, who I like, I'll just say a name. I'll just say Ken. I like Ken and Ken's a nice guy. But Ken can't handle my game. He got no game. I'm not trying to be mean, but squadron superintendent versus group shirt. 
who's making more impact at the group and the weight. But am I a medic? I'm not. And how do you stratify a first sergeant? So I bring this up, why? Because like I said, I teach with stories, but me and that colonel had a lengthy discussion about that EPR, but Lou, you know, my command chief's like, don't sweat it, I got you. So even without a wing strat that year, I made senior by 22. Why? Because that EPR bullet on the bottom, Colonel Gallagher, who passed away, which is uh, shortly after I left Edwards, sad to hear about it, awesome individual, great leader. He put as much in, as much senior impact, senior NCO impact in my wing as the command chief. That's a slam dunk, home run, goal, whatever. It helped me make senior by 22 points when the wing commander hits it like that. So I'm learning on the move. You know, I want you to accept challenge, adapt, and be resilient. Gather feedback from multiple sources. So on Valentine, you said you nailed it. You put the nail on the head earlier when you said, if you are going to get people with your perspectives, you're only going to get what you want. Deflect. Sometimes you got to go, mm -hmm. or disrespect cheap, but I think you're wrong. And here's why. Thought, you know, coming to me with a well thought out idea saying, hey, here's the reason I say this and here's why. Boom, boom, boom. Something I tried to do as a MAGCOM chief as, as somebody in the room likes to say, boom, as a, a AFI comes down. Well, that's Air Force level impact. If you don't think I picked a different mag or wing functional that time to go look at this different AFI, you don't think that looked good on their EPR where Air Force level impact handpicked by MAGCOM functional to scrub AFI 11401 identified 17 errors, you know, that's, a, that's, that's, that's phenomenal. Um, focus on the process and not the end goal. I also want you to create a feedback loop. Also applied learning, it, it enhances innovation. So Rodriguez, what do you think I mean, means by applied learning enhances innovation? Hmm. Applied learning enhances innovation. Um, I guess whatever you've, I mean, as far as what you've learned and <laughs> maybe just uh, applying it <laughs> in general, I don't know, it's a very kind of common question. Apply the learning that you, you have or the knowledge that you have and uh, overall, I feel like that will enhance. I don't know. <laughs> That's okay. Someone, I need to phone a friend. That's okay, Mitchell. Help her out. What's your thoughts? Yeah, I think she's. I think she's pretty close to it. I, I would say applied learning enhances innovation, meaning that the more knowledge you obtain, like you said earlier, Chief, knowledge is, is power. Uh, the more you're able to add tools into your toolbox, like what you're doing with us right now here today, you're giving us a lot of tools into our leadership toolbox that we can then apply to to build those innovative teams and to enhance our innovation. So when you when we talk about applied learning enhances innovation, that that's what I take from that. Am I my closer? Yeah, you're both spot on. Boom. She she, she was almost on the, hit the nail on the head, and then you you just finished it. There we go. Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> Appreciate that, sir. That's almost like a dad joke, isn't it? I ain't got no kids though, so I can't tell dad jokes. <laughs> wow. No kids that you know about. Wow, I just went there. That's not very nice, is it? Don't do me like that, Chief. Don't do me like that. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Got it. So, hey, this is wrapping up the team innovation. Team innovation and practice. You got to you gotta get after it. Um, building a community of innovation. We've done it here at Kirtland. Um, the Team Kirtland Innovators. We're going to meet on the second. Uh, Major Bleha, who's the LRS commander for the 377th Air Base, or LRS here on base, is going to be our guest speaker. But I'll tell you this, I went to Mass Sergeant Snuffy and I said, hey, Sergeant Snuffy, I as the Air Force Nuke Weapons Center should not be hosting this meeting every time. It's the team Kirtland Innovators, you should. And I don't pull this up very often, you know, that's, I only wore this shirt because we had the Chiefs were, you know, giving somebody a coin today. Um, and like I said, that was another Air Force career. Um, I'm happy and love, like I said, being a worker bee. Um, but how many times should I have to email this Master Sergeant Snuffy? 
once, maybe twice. But so when I got to the third time, me and Major Blaha had a conversation. And he's like, Chief, we need to have a talk. We need to have a talk because uh, Snuffy ain't bringing it. He's too, he's too immersed in getting EPR bullets than he is for making a difference to his airmen. Well, as the commander said to me, you know, he just kind of dropped the mic. He boomed, whatever. He, you know, he he went there. And I'm like, wow, which is too bad because I, I, I like this guy, but I shouldn't have to go back three times. So who's hosting the team currently in Innovators here on the second? I am. Are me and that master going to have a talk? Is it going to be kind of one-sided? Yeah. And I'll give you a real world example here. There was a young lady, a tech sergeant. Uh, she was fired from her squadron here on base, the 5th Earth Rescue Squadron. Moved over to the operational support squadron. Six months later, the squadron commander looked me dead in the face and he goes, Chief, what the did you do? What? He goes, she went from being fired and six months later, she's our squadron NCO of the quarter. What did you do? What do you mean, what did I do? He goes, I know you were involved. <laughs> and I said, it wasn't me, sir. I go, I go myself and, and uh, um, Torrance Johnson, TJ, and TJ's still here. He's a G Tim's guy, been the G Tim's guy, you know, since I was here as a senior. Uh, he was the last senior master sergeant match comp functional for AETC for my career. And awesome individual. But both of us sat down and had very real conversations. My conversation was her, with her was I was still active duty on terminal leave, teaching a bullet writing class on, for the career field that I just was retiring from. And her and another NCOIC decided to go to B-Dub instead of coming to this bullet writing class. And Sergeant Valentine, I saw, I saw your eyes get this big. And I'm like, really? And I was still active duty. And I'm like, you know, I'm not saying I'm a big deal, but I'm one of 13 MATCHCOM chiefs. Really? This is how you're going to be? We had a very one-sided conversation. And I'm like, you know, you've been fired. You were fired. And, you know, here's, here's, here's what I'm hearing from other folks. Not for me, because I haven't been here. Uh, but, like I said, six months later, NCO of the quarter for the squadron. And she's she pinned on master recently. So. so take time to build your innovation team strategy. This next slide I refer to as the happy slide. You know why I, heard, I refer to it as the happy slide? The happy slide. I love it. Because it's the last slide. I figure you're going with that, Chief. Exactly. Any questions? I'll kick things off real quick. First of all, that, that was awesome. I think I can speak for everybody here. You know, you mentioned earlier, we've, we've, we've had some, some great speakers in the past, but I'll tell you, Chief, I think you've given us the most tools that we can equip right away, you know, that we can really start um, implementing to our, not only just our, our, you know, our fellow cadre here at the Dets, but the cadets. And like you mentioned, those cadets could go on to become, you know, the next Chief of Staff of the Air Force one day. So it's, it's pretty cool. Uh -huh. But uh, <laughs> my question, though, so you, you talked about um, every member of, of, of a team has a strength. And, and my commander likes to say, you know, everybody has a superpower. Everybody brings something different to the fight. But you also mentioned weaknesses as well. And I, I wanted to get your opinion on, on this, um, you know, try to find that balance between playing to the strengths, you know, accentuating those positives while also – uh, building up the weaknesses, turning the weaknesses into strengths. And, and the reason I, I asked the question is I, I've seen often a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of frontline supervisors, a lot of, you know, NCOs I've seen, a lot of my peers, when they're mentoring their airmen, I've noticed that sometimes they focus too much on trying to, you know, make, the, make those weaknesses strengths that they're missing some of those, some of those superpowers, right? So how do you how do you balance that? You know, because you don't want to just you know play up to, to somebody's strengths all the time without you know making them a whole a whole person, whole airman, well rounded. Um, how do you find that balance? So let's go real world example. I have a coworker here. I'm just gonna call him B Money. That's his nickname in the office. Is B Money. I like it. So B Money is a, he's an engine troop, and he had the opportunity to go back and be an engine troop as like a WG, I don't know, 10, 12, whatever it is. He's currently a GS-13. Do the math. That's a $40,000 hit. 
And his point was, man, hey, I'm struggling. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. So as a teammate, you know, it was in my job and the boss's job to build him back up and go, hey, man, you know, no, you're bringing it. You got, you know, this strength. Don't get me wrong. We all have our weaknesses. One of the weaknesses of his and, 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 and he's put it out there and we've helped him on it is like, you know, COVID. Part of our job as plans programs for the Air Force Nuke Weapons Center is, is reporting up the COVID numbers, right? Nothing like being the new guy and having to report on myself and my family because the way I've got it at work here on base. Um, and we do the report. So I literally had to report myself, which I thought was kind of funny. But what I'm talking about is there's this document. If you were traveling during COVID when it was bad, you had to have at least the SES or, you know, civilian one-star equivalent sign this letter. Well, this letter is on a PDF document. Well, B Money took like three days to get that that product, and my boss is like, "Hey, dude, get me the eighty percent." Long story short, is you get me the eighty percent, I'll take it over the finish line. What B Money has been able to do here recently, in the last several months, is instead of getting it that hundred percent, taking eight hours or nine hours to do that, is he's now got it in his head, get the eighty percent get it out in a, in a more timely fashion. Um, but I mentioned it before, making that 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 weakness into a strength. Uh, but he also had to do some self-reflection and get some coaching and get some, get some you know, because the art of thank you, I hate to say it, is dead. You know, um, write, writing somebody a letter of appreciation, what? The PJ that we met who was 10 years in operations that was the first coin he ever received today. He's a PJ saving lives. Is that kind of crazy? Yeah. Are all of us saving lives? No. Um, but I'll tell you, going across the street, teaching, you know, to the wing staff uh, here recently, their additional duty first sergeant saved a life. And that was one of the bullets they had on that 1206. And, and she had it written, okay, now it's written really, really good because it was okay, but we made it a lot better. Weakness into a strength. I hope I answered your question there. Spot on, Chief, I appreciate it. And I'll open the floor up to anybody else that has questions. I was fully re ready for you to press that button, Sergeant Rodriguez. I actually you, did have a question. you done with all your questions, man? You're like, I got my two or three, I'm good? But I'm also not one of those folks that say, I'm not leaving until I get three questions. I don't roll like that. Um, I, would Sir, I just wanted to see if you had heard of uh, the Phoenix Spark. Is that, is that work with uh, the Spark Tank? It does. But they've also I was got... at Travis Air Force Base, and I was able to assist them. I was a wing staff, and um, we, we pretty much found the room. I got all the items purchased, and it was really cool to see them making 3D items and getting some of the fuel items that they needed and, you know, making those type of things. So that was really cool. I just wanted to see if that was uh, part and of this well part. And, and being benchmarked. Uh, I mentioned Major Bleha here. He went TDY during COVID to, their, to, to Travis to see what they were doing there, to benchmark what they're doing there. Um, I, Mitchell, you were honor guard. I know you were honor guard here in building 1010 here. They've got the, and I didn't know this until recently, they have the logistics readiness squadron. Even though all the vehicles are on this side of base, the commander's on the west side of base, but long story short is they have the Tiger Spark tank. They've got a room that, they re, that they're getting because there's, there's funds out there. There's a thing called squadron innovation funds, SIF funds. If you don't know about them, ask somebody. You know, get the information on it. You know, what they're going to do here and what they kind of learned at, at Travis, and it's cool, is they're, what they're going to do is they've got, you know, people with these, these goggles on, the you know, virtual stuff, and they're going to be basically driving the forklift. And, you know, using the forklift, doing it all virtually. Mitchell being here with 58th with me, they, if you look at all the different AETC wings, and you look at the amount of money that all the wings in the AETC saved, 
you know, it's all, all right about here. And then you got to the 58 South. Why? Because they were constantly innovating, constantly improving to make it better. You, the most expensive training in the Air Force a few years ago was here at Kirtland. It wasn't the F-35, the F-22. It wasn't even the CV-22. It was a, a one version of the C-130 that only one guard unit does. Well, why are we doing it here? Why don't we move that to the unit and have them train there? Because with the 58 SAL, and yes, it's Special Operations Wing, they're part of AETC. So Sergeant Rodriguez, you're now a loadmaster and you went to school at, at Little Rock and you're a qualified loadmaster. Well, if you wanna be a Special Ops loadmaster, go fly in the MC-135J or the HC-135J, you gotta come through here at Kirtland. But they're constantly innovating here. Um, the 58, the 377th, you know, AFRL. Mitchell, if you came here, you wouldn't even recognize the base on how many changes the Air Force Research Lab has done on the west side of base. It's huge, monstrous on, on some of the stuff that they've done. But people are constantly innovating. How can we do this better? You know, the biggest pot of money we use is flying those airplanes. Well, if I can put you in a simulator or, you know, um, a virtual and get the same thing, because they're doing that at Travis. We got a briefing on it this, I think it was either this week or last week. But with that also, Mitch, you brought it up. If you guys are interested, give me a time and location. I gladly teach military writing. I'm going to go there with you guys. I'm like DJ Khaled. All I do is win, win, win. <laughs> and I know you're going, he's a little cray cray. No, I back it up with numbers. Last three years I've been retired. I've helped 14 people make chief. It's you doing what you need to do, but the most important thing is putting the bullets where they need to be, documenting it, cool. percentages. You know, 100%, 100% doesn't tell me nothing. 100% means it says, ooh, did your job. Where's the wow factor? Right. You know, increased by 50%. Um, you know, you led an event. Well, how many people did you lead? Well, I led 25 people. Well, how long, you know, say, or say 100. Just do it easier math. 100 people. Well, how many hours were they out there for? Three. Well, that's 300 volunteer hours. And that's not including the 15 hours you did, you know, putting it together. You know, I, I see it all the time. Ran the annual awards banquet for, you know, ROTC detachment. Well, how many committees were there? Right. And how many folks did were on each committee? You know, how many hours did everybody combined? I see it all the time. Base-wide events, huge stuff. You know, I had two master sergeants look at me and go, Chief, why am I not getting promoted? I'm like, dude, you're a defender. And that's awesome that you're a cop. But in the middle of the front of your EPR, I have billion. I didn't say million. I said billion dollar products or projects hidden in the front of your EPR. Mm -hmm. But like I said, if, if you guys are interested, give me a time, location. I'll teach the second innovation class or I'll also teach a bullet writing class. I'm here for you. You can also hit me up directly. Like I said, EPRs and SERFs, I'm about you. And that's the one thing that hasn't changed in 10 years. And I think you'll agree with me, Mitchell. 100% Chief. And we appreciate you. I'm going to give everybody your contact info too. And uh, you mind if I give them your Facebook or? That's fine. All right. Sounds good. Because, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be bringing you back for, for more. Uh, but I will say, you know, Chief, you helped me, you helped me make master this time around. So when, when he talked about earlier with bullet riding, uh, he's a great guy to go to, trust me, because I, I thought I knew what I was doing and I, I showed him some of my evals and it just, it blew my mind. And it, it helped me become better equipped to take care of my airmen as well. You know, it's the little, it's the little things that you don't realize when you're, when you're crafting packages. But with that said, uh, Chief, we appreciate you. This was awesome. I hope everybody has a great Memorial weekend. Stay safe, um, you know, and, uh, Definitely don't forget, you know, those that uh, that paved the way for us, you know, as we reflect as we reflect this Memorial Day. I don't know if those of you that are, that are into the, you know, the Memorial Day Murph challenges, the fitness challenges. If you're doing that, uh, hit me up. I might be doing something like that as well. But uh, just definitely take that that second to reflect back on those that, you know, the, the giants that paved the way for us to be where we are right now and, and do what we love doing. But with that said, you guys have a great night and we'll talk to you later. Boom.
Chief, um, sorry, I know I was like kind of busy running around here. We actually are about to commission one of our cadets who got his PRAP, like all good to go. go. Um, but I want to say thank you so much for.